Good afternoon, Mr. Frazier. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm David Reidenauer. My first name is uh, spelled D-A-V-I-D, last name R-I-D-E-N-O-U-R. I'm vice president of the National Center for Public Policy Research, a free market uh, think tank. Uh, my question pertains again to um, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare. Uh, my, que my question is, um, according to a number of press reports, Pharma spend about $150 million promoting this legislation. I'd like to know, uh, number one, what uh, amount of that Merck paid for. Um, and I understand if you don't have that number right at the top of your head, but I was That's hoping right. if, if you don't have that uh, information, if you would be uh, willing to commit now to letting shareholders know how much uh, was spent on that. Number two, the Centers for Medicare and uh, uh, Medicaid recent review of the prostate cancer prevenge appears to have been prompted at least in part by concerns over costs according to documents obtained by a public interest law firm through a Freedom of Information Act request. Uh, obviously this is not a Merck product, but this could just as easily happen to Merck uh, products. So my question here is, do you have concerns that uh, there could be restrictions on Merck products later on because obviously the uh, Obamacare legislation set up uh, payment advisory boards. Um, are there aspects to this legislation that you would like to see changed? Or have you changed your mind about Obamacare and uh, uh, want it repealed? Thank, Thank you very much for your questions. Uh, first of all, I want to be very clear that we supported health care reform again uh, in its most current conception uh, because we believe that the legislation would ensure affordable access to a larger number of Americans. We are closely monitoring the implementation. You mentioned the uh, independent payment advisory boards. That's something that we've said publicly on, on television and other places that we have concerns about. Um, but overall, we continue to think that um, a bill that actually allows more people to have access to medicines, while not perfect, is a good thing. So 32 million more people will be insured over the next decade because of this law. As a company that develops medicines and vaccines, life-saving medicines and vaccines, we think it's a positive thing for 32 million more people to have coverage. Uh, it also, by the way, provides for preventive care so that people who need vaccines can have first dollar coverage of vaccines. Uh, we, we're pleased that the bill, as it's currently developed, does not have any direct price controls. We also believe in free markets. We understand that it's important for the process of innovation that Peter Kim talked about up here to have a marketplace that actually incentivizes that research. When we put a dollar in the research today, a drug might not come out for 10 to 15 years. So what we're trying our best to do is to engage in a constructive way around those aspects of the bill that we fear would actually interfere with innovation long term. Um, but that's basically what my answer would be that. And I will take under advisement your request that I first learn the amount that we spent through Pharma, and then we'll decide how we would actually make that uh, available. So thank well, you we, for your we question. We certainly appreciate that information, and just keep in mind the advertisement of 32 million additional people being covered by health care. Just because the bill says that doesn't mean it's going to do it. We already see people losing their health care coverage as a, re as a result of increasing prices. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So thank you.